right, all right, all right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bitmap After Dark Live. My name is Jeff, also known as the Revit Kid. This is episode 92. I'm super excited uh, to bring back in uh, a guest that you guys probably all know and love. Um, and we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence or AI. Um, if you probably saw on the channel, I posted a video about Varus earlier in the week. Um, there's been a lot of discussion um, about uh, a few different tools within the AI realm um, and, and how they're going to impact, uh, for better or worse, uh, our industry. And so uh, when Marcelo, who's our guest that I'll introduce in a minute, uh, reached out and we were chatting about what topics and he was super pumped about AI. And uh, and anyone who knows Marcelo knows that um, if he's pumped about something and digging into it, we're going to have some extremely unique and, and fun uh, perspectives on it. Uh, so uh, in a minute, I'll introduce him and we'll start the conversation. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time live, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a weekly live stream where I talk about Revit, uh, BIM, and pretty much any uh, related technologies within AEC um, or just general architecture, engineering, construction topics. Um, you know, we, we are on nine, episode 92, so we've hit a lot of topics over the years. If you've missed any of them, be sure to check out uh, all 91 previous episodes at live.bamafterdark.com. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this content. And if you're here tonight at 9 p.m. on Thursday night, um, then feel free to ask questions and chit chat in the, in the chat box. I'll be checking it out as we go through, and I'll be feeding uh, questions to our guests and to the conversation um, as as I see fit. Uh, it's always great to see some folks in there, some returning uh, uh, chat uh, people who uh, uh, I can't wait to meet some of you in person because I've been seeing your chat names for three years. So I'm, I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. Uh, before we do jump into this episode and introduce our guests, I did want to take a moment to thank our sponsor of this season of BIM After Dark Live. <music> All right, so RevitFamily.biz is sponsoring this season of BIM After Dark Live. For those of you that don't know what RevitFamily.biz is, it is a website created by Brenton Weiberg, who will be a guest this season and has been a guest in the past, uh, mostly talking about Revit uh, family creation. And um, and it's a family creation uh, library that he's, he's generated, typically and mostly uh, cabinet families as well as windows and door families awesome family libraries definitely check them out um, not only did he sponsor this season of vim after dark live but he also offered 20 percent off if you use offer code revit kid 23 so be sure to check out his families and support those who are supporting this show and i see some returning visitors i see reggie's there from my community what's up reggie uh scott's here uh sean uh, uh nick from revit pure is here we got some awesome awesome people in the chat so I'm looking forward to seeing. Oh, Junior's here too from uh, from Jamaica. Junior's always here. Thanks for joining, Junior. <laughs> uh, I'm 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 anticipating a lot of awesome stuff going on in the chat, so I'm going to keep an eye on that. Uh, and so, without further ado, I know you've been waiting in the wings there, uh, Marcelo. But uh, welcome back to the show, man. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for coming on and uh, and and chatting about about this topic. I I have a feeling we're going to go into some interesting spaces with it uh for those that uh don't know who you are um and maybe haven't seen the previous four or five episodes you've been on i'll make sure to link them below if you guys are interested in seeing some of the cool stuff that marcel has talked about on the show but maybe give everyone a quick little uh bio on yourself okay hello my name is marcelo scambaluri i have been in the industry in the aec industry for 24 years now and uh i'm a structural engineer by training uh <clears throat> i work for uh I work for a structural engineering company and uh, well, actually I work for a few. And uh, my whole thing is that I try to look at the latest technology, uh, do research on it, find out if it's practical for applications into my companies as well as, uh, as well as the industry. And then I try to uh, explain that in a simple, easy, digestible way. Uh, I've also recently wrote a book, uh, Jeff, you had me on the show to describe that one. It's uh, the um, Dynamo and, and Grasshopper for Revit Cheat Sheet Reference Manual. It goes over Dynamo and Rhino Inside Technology. And uh, that's that's what I try to do. Reach out, learn the latest tech, help the industry. Case in point, the new topic we're going to be talking about today, AI technology. It's going to be super fun and exciting. So thanks for having me on, Jeff. Of course, man. 
yeah, uh, I, I've also been 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 really digging into the possibilities of it. And I think you and I are similar in that fashion uh, where we see these tools and, and we look for all the opportunities as well as usually trying to have fun with them too while we're doing it. Uh, so with that yeah. in mind, um, I guess let's start. Uh, what what started what started your AI journey? I know knowing you, I know this isn't like a, a couple of weeks ago. This was probably like <laughs> a couple of years ago. You started digging into this, right? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, actually, the interesting thing is of all the technology I've ever uh, started diving into and learning and trying to figure out how to apply practically into our industry, this topic has moved the quickest. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, so I so uh, in. So I started looking into it in July of 2022, actually. Uh, I saw some examples of uh, how we could do text to image generation, and I got really excited about that technology. Uh, and then, so that's text to image, and then I started getting into text to text. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's been, um, so it's been, it's been many months. Uh, I've used it, I use it almost on a daily basis. Uh, and then I've learned how to customize it and get into some of our applications that we use in our industry. Uh, not just out of the box stuff. So it's it's really exciting. This this new technology. I I saw this in July of 2022, mm-hmm. and I had a similar thought when I saw uh, Dynamo in 2014 that I needed to learn. Saw the same thing when I saw the new uh, massing and adaptive component environments back in 2010. Jeff, I think mm-hmm. you were there too. Oh, for, I remember. So. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That was the uh, infamous and, elephant, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, and then I saw uh, when I saw Enscape for the first time, mm-hmm. uh, late 2014, mm-hmm. uh, with visualization in real time. Uh, and then I saw uh, in early in late uh, 2018, I also saw the right and one side Revit technology about mm-hmm. solving interop issues with design software and Revit. So this is kind of the latest thing, uh, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. But like, like I said, it's been moving the quickest because uh, the unique thing about AI is is uh, the tools that came out were really for the public, the mm-hmm. mass public, not just an AEC. Right. So I think that's why it kind of moved, moved so quickly. And now it's, you know, it, it's always, there's controversy surrounded it. So I'm sure at this point, everyone has at least heard of the term AI and 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 it's on the tip of a lot of people's tongue and conversation. So, um, so what I'm doing now is uh, with some of the customization I've done. We'll show some of that today. Uh, I'm also planning um, another webinar coming up. I also proposed a few classes to AEC conferences this year, so I can, um, yeah, so I can help um, get tell the industry how to wrap their head around around this. Awesome, that's awesome. That's that great. Question? Yeah, no, that did. That's that's fantastic. So, um. I think for for those and even I I struggle with this sometimes, especially when I first started really digging into it is um, there's a certain aspect of the concept of AI that people can get. Right. But then we start talking about the tools and implementing the tools and and it becomes less tangible when you start like reading or like like it's I don't want to say it's uh, it's 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 takes a lot of customization or understanding, but there are, you know, certain certain tools um, seem to be a little harder to grasp for others. So I, I guess what I'm what I'm trying to get at is like when it comes to the tools of AI that you started digging into, um, you know, even just the names of them, the usage of them, um, you know, like, for example, mid journey, how it sort of sits within discord and all this weird stuff. And then, you know, like there's all these different ways that they're approachable. Part of the reason why I, I dove so heavily into Veris when I first saw it was because it was this tangible workflow built in tool knowing that the back end was was what you're talking about was this sort of this this ai you know this let maybe more code based ai thing um but the front end was just so much more tangible like you install the tool it's a plug in revit you launch it and you use it um as opposed to some of the more more um i don't want to say i guess customize or 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 less uh let less easy to use approaches. So, I mean, when you started back in July and as you're working through, like what tools are you talking about when you say uh, text to image or image to text or text to text and whatnot? And yeah, how can, so how can when I first- even like start, like where, like where did, like chat GPT is the name of a tool that works over, you know, and so like like how, how, how can someone like even get started like with a What tool? are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, like what, what are, we are we talking, talking about? about? Yeah. AI is a thing, what tools are we talking about? <laughs> it's a thing, it's a thing. Yeah, and you know what, the way I like to look at it is actually AI, well, first of all, we can back up even further. AI is nothing new to us. It's part of our lives and we didn't even really know it, mm. right? Like we could talk about spell checker, we could talk about, um, mm-hmm. we could talk about Grammarly, we could talk about things like that, some intelligent 
input and intelligent output uh, that we've kind of used in our daily lives. When we think about Amazon recommending what we can buy, you know, this is all AI kind of logic and technology. Mm. We, could, we could even argue that an if statement right. is, 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 is some sort of uh, machine learning mm. AI. So it's just, it's part of our industry. I think what's happened um, towards the middle of last year was a lot of these tools that work with AI and generate AI um, became easier to use. So when I first started looking at it, um, I think I started with Dolly, mm -hmm. and it was kind of this like GitHub version where you needed to get it and you needed to download it and you needed to like have a remote server and you know it was very clunky. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Clunky. And, and, and clunky. What, That's the word I was looking for before. Clunky. <laughs> it was clunky. Um, <laughs> uh, and then um, even the even the text even the text to text generators were a little clunky. Then um, Chat GPT came out uh, kind of towards the end of the year, and it made a lot of national news. And and all it took um, as as these tools got a little easier to use, all it took was uh, a login account. And, and a computer and the ability to type text uh, inside a box mm -hmm. and hit enter. And, and so that kind of became this super low hanging fruit. It was the fruit on the ground, if you want to talk about it. You didn't even have to reach for it, right? right. <laughs> it was right. super easy. Uh, exactly. And then, um, so that's kind of the, and then the text to image generators uh, became, uh, they're a little more wrapped up in, because they're a little more complex and we can talk about like their AIs and how they work, but they're a little more complex than just generating text. But the whole idea is that you can generate something using AI with text prompts. So using text to generate images. Like Jeff, remember when we were setting up this meeting, mm -hmm. uh, I said, I had, I like basically said, uh, Jeff, the Revit kid, you know, as a fisherman, you know, awesome right. dad. And then it showed you, it showed yeah. you by the yeah. lake fishing with your kid, right? Yeah. In a boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but even then, it took a little bit of uh, a little bit of a learning curve, like you said. Uh, that was Mid Journey, which is kind of wrapped inside of this social media platform. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Dolly Dolly Two is still kind of wrapped up in in kind of this like service that you have to use. So uh, those are a little harder to get to, but they're still making a lot of attention because you can generate these images through just through just text. And you know, as we move forward. And this is all available to the public, but you know, to move forward, they'll just kind of, they'll just get, they'll just get easier and easier. And I think another thing too is not only were they easy to use, but a lot of controversies wrapped around them. Uh, I remember when I first started studying Dolly and and Mid Journey, um, someone won a someone won a digital art contest, and they just ended up typing in a few prompts mm. into one of these generators and end up winning this this uh digital you know as opposed to people making 3d models and renderings and things like that this was generated just through some prompts and they said yeah that's that's art and you deserve to win and you know that generated a lot of controversy and that's just one example so the controversy the conversations the easy to use kind of made this thing just grow like wildfire and, and be in the front of everyone's mind yeah i think i think that's a great point the, the easy to use i think is 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 probably what what has brought it to the to the to the forefront so then i guess um Let's talk a little bit about maybe uh, what what are the what are the opportunities you saw. But before we get into sort of the opinions on on and the controversy controversial side of of why it's kind of making news as well. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe maybe just when when you first saw it and and when you thought of the practical daily uses. You know what are the things. You know let's maybe maybe we'll take one of the tools that you saw um, um, and and sort of the opportunities that you saw from it. Okay, um, so this is kind of like mid last year. Um, other than other than going through the honeymoon phase of of seeing how cool this was with just generating. So let's talk to text from image. Uh, so example, going in through the mid journey technology that's that's inside Discord, being able to type a prompt and get an image immediately. Um, it was a big honeymoon phase for me. I was extremely excited to see. This technology, um, nothing I've ever really seen before. Um, but then it turned to okay, it, that's cool to see a panda in a living room, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know how could we how could we talk about this and use it practically? So I had some early conversations with some clients and some architects, mm -hmm. uh, and and um, there were times when either they knew about the tool or I showed them, and we started having early concept conversations of like, well, okay, what 
let's like let's make let's make believe right now and let's pretend you're a client i'm an owner you know i'm 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 the architect you're the owner let's talk about what we want and so we would we would have these like role play scenarios like okay i want a low rise with parking and i want cobblestones and i want the alley to look like uh, uh a dark alley like in lisbon in lisbon portugal mm-hmm. you know in the theme of this you know and Mm-hmm. And, and and start to shape some ideas as opposed to you know kind of like the kind of like the back of the envelope and 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 that started sparking some conversations on like okay this probably at this point in time and this was middle last year this point in time probably is not going to be one where we're going to generate an image and put it on our drawings and then you know it but it's gonna it's gonna be a conversation starter right and and so if we can if we can at least view it at that we're kind of at a safe place and if we can have it as a conversation starter then um it's going to aid us in in going through some of these um early concept um iterations and then and then from like a system standpoint like with structure it'd be like okay what if you know we'd have conversations on you know starting with like a base structure and wrapping architecture around it how would that look or what would exposed structure look like or or how would like landscaping look around it these kind of generate fun fun exciting scenarios and 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 so that that's kind of where i saw the early adoption with with these kind of tools for the the text like the prompt to image mm-hmm. generate and a whole other uh evolution um i think happened with the text to text we can get into that in a little bit yeah yeah no i think similar I think, thing going to yeah. so, so i think i think text so that if we stay with text to image so when you say text okay. to image just for for folks you know if if again trying to make it tangible um, there are lots of tools out there, but you're kind of along the lines of like a Dolly or a Mid Journey, and for those, yeah. right, it's kind of what you're what, where you're at. And so, for those, for those who don't even know what that means and what we're talking about, uh, essentially, um, you know, th- these are these are pro programs, so to speak, services. I guess depending on how you look at it. Um, but mm-hmm. long story short, you do exactly what uh, Marcel was just saying. You would type, "I want to see a, a panda in in jeans running around in on space or something like that," and it would generate a bunch of options of images that 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 are that. And you could say like in the style of Van Gogh, and it would be in style of Van Gogh. So for architecture, you know, you could you could imagine what you can do there, right? It's I want to see a uh, a small cabin in the woods in the style of Zaha or something like that with, and then you can start prompting more. You can say, you know, windows facing South and you know, whatever, whatever, until, you know, you, you start just sort of fudging around with it. And so those, that's, that's what we're saying with by text to images is, is, is taking these prompts and, and generating imagery from it. Um, and I, I think, I think what you were saying is, is valid and probably where most people should, should see these tools for us is, is, is idea starters and, and, and iterating through ideas. And the way I see it is similar to, um, you know, I've got, I've got books back here and magazines and brow- bookmarks on my browser of all my favorite architects and buildings and houses and stuff like that. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing a mid-century modern renovation, you know, I've got three mid-century books here with flags all over them. And, you know, the really what's, you know, all of those things are going to inspire and be idea starters for a brand new design, let's say, or innovation design. And so, you know, I could also type into a dolly like, hey, you know, uh, X, Y, and Z, you know, prompts through it, or I can even upload an image of, of something and, and, and sort of say, you know, uh, change, you know, whatever, prompt to change the style of the image or, or iterate through different styles uh, in, in, you know, in X, Y, and Z. So, um, I think the evolution of it, and this is, and, and that's exactly where I started too. It's exactly what you're saying, where I was, I was just having fun making cool, cool stuff, right? Just <laughs> cool images and whatnot, and not really seeing the practical use. And and I was uploading, I I was uploading renderings too. So like I would make a rendering of, of a building from Revit or from Enscape Twin Motion, whatever, of like a design of mine, and then upload it to a Dolly and see like what what you could do from that. Um, and I always felt a little limited in the customization on that side of it, as well as the control. Um, and, and so I never really found the connection between, um, between sort of how can this work in my design process other than an idea starter. And that's why I was so excited with Varus and I don't want to make this all about Varus, but just, I think Varus is a, is a, is a good example of, uh, the service slash, you know, approach the image to text, to image, whatever being packaged and bundled inside of a tool as something for our workflow. Right. And, and that's why I think mm-hmm. it's great because it's, it's. That just shows you, okay, now instead of starting with just a general prompt, 
you're starting with a design or a concept you actually built. And now you're now you're using that to iterate through it. And you're using the power of AI to say, all right, now what if I want to flip this to a, a standing seam metal uh, roof, or I want to flip this to brick from wood and, and just see it quickly. And, and then, you know, give me five options like that. And that that to me is where because now you're using you're using the human touch of whatever concept I had when I designed the building, but now you're using the computer to iterate through something that I could do that in Twin Motion or Lumion or Enscape, but you know, it would take you know you get probably get similar results of just flipping the material, flipping material, rendering, flipping material, rendering. <laughs> but but now you're you're generating you can generate 400 results if you wanted of all kinds of options through it. So so that that to me is where the most tangible sort of uh, adaptation of something like a dolly bringing all the way through and then boom it's into it's into revit and it's something that holy crap we can use this in our workflow <laughs> you know and i think yeah. text to text probably is taking that same route and that's 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 mm -hmm. probably where you're seeing it right yeah yeah and yeah before we go to text to text um you're you're right jeff um yeah it's 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 exciting you know we got to give a shout out to um we got to give a shout out to uh um, to evolve lab and 100%. uh and the great yeah and the great work that they're doing uh, they were the first one out of the gate to kind of come up with that concept in a tool inside of AEC. Uh, what's exciting about that, right, is that um, is that it uses a prompt. So you could argue, like you said, well, I could I could change I could change a corrugated roof to a tile roof in Revit, mm -hmm. right, and then and then render it in Enscape, and then I'll get an answer. Yeah, but you've got to do that. It takes another level of skill to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. If you have a text prompt and all you need is to put in a few prompts, mm -hmm. it does it for you. And what's exciting is that's the difference is that you're going to, you're going to probably end up with similar results, but the effort that's put into it to get there is, is vastly different. And, you know, as I think about this, it almost seems like this is kind of the natural progression hmm. of our industry i mean don't we start with concepts it's like you know i want gosh you know would that be should that be tile you know gosh hmm. could it be corrugated roof you know can it be a little transparent because it's a greenhouse or you know like okay but now go model it you know <laughs> but now it's like wait <laughs> these are just concepts you know especially early on like even schematic drawings they're very diagrammatic in nature right hmm. it's like just that's just that's just how we work right is hmm. is this kind of concept idea and so um, what what I'm seeing now and what I've been working on too and kind of show you the start of it is is like how how text prompts can help you generate and replace some of the um, manual modeling uh, that or, or whatever you're doing uh, because ultimately um, you know if it's if you accept it as, as right you know how, who cares how you get there Right. And so these tools are just kind of making it a lot easier. There's a lot of controversy with, with that too, but I just thought I'd, I just thought I'd say that because it's, <laughs> it's, it's now replacing some of the things you, you, know, you right. said. I saw your, I saw your stuff with Ver, uh, Vera, Ver. How do we pronounce that? We're going to need know. to get. I said Veris, yeah, but I, I don't know we're gonna, right. <laughs> we'll, um, have to, we'll have to Bill or Ben some from Yeah, we're going to need to get Bill <laughs> Allen in here to, to, to tell us the proper pronunciation <laughs> of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they don't <laughs> mind if we do it either way, but. <laughs> either way, yeah. Uh, either no, way. And, and so, I mean, I don't want to go too off the deep end, but. Mm -hmm. um, the way the way I sort of see it is, you know, I'm I'm actually you can't really see the books because it's crap, but um, I have uh, you might be able to see them actually, but you know the books back here. I'm I'm a huge science mm -hmm. fiction fan. I read a lot of science fiction, and so awesome. um, you know when when to me like when I see the the text prompt sort of concept, I'm thinking like like what the next couple steps of like well I could I could just vocalize into text and then it, it'll do it right. So because we already have awesome awesome ability to to you know talk to text right i mean that's 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 come a long way and it's like the next step is like you're thinking it and it's it's writing the text but but like when when you start thinking that process through now like instead of keystrokes and programming which we're all set up to because we've been doing it for so long that's how like dynamo and and, and c sharp everything you're always thinking click 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 now it's like i don't even need to think of the keystrokes it takes i just need to think of what i want i want you know right. draw me a wall three feet long and it's not like wall click wall click here click here. it's like it's just you know it's now you're just thinking of things and that that to me is the the craziest part about it because like you said we it's crazy switch, we could flip the roof material but but flipping the roof material requires a 
task, right? You have to click it, you have to flip the material, click edit type, blah, 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 blah. You have to open rendering, click like, and as a automation, like for so long, we've thinking, you know, automation is that we could automate that by just automating those steps. But this is a whole, a different approach to those processes, right? That's right. You could even take it, you could even back it off a little bit and say, well, I could automate, I could automate flipping tile to corrugated roof, mm. metal roof. I could do that. I could use Dynamo mm. and program that. Yeah, but you got to program it, right? Like <laughs> you need, you you, you can still, you know what I mean? Like this mm -hmm. takes it to the very beginning from from going from the prompts. And so that's what's, that, you're right. That's what's, that's what's really excited is about it. And isn't that where we start anyway? Hmm. You know, so, okay. So let's talk about text to text. Uh, text, that text. Went yeah, let's, through let's maybe set up what that is for people too. Uh, just for anyone, right, maybe you want to give it Maybe anyone was not familiar with chat GT. <laughs> if, if you want to or me, it doesn't really matter. You can start if you want. Maybe at least what, what we mean when we're saying text to text and then maybe one or two of the tools that we're talking about that, that use this this process. Okay. Or so technology. Text, <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Text to text probably is more well known on the planet right now because of a product called Chat GPT. It's made by uh, OpenAI, which uh, also makes the Dolly. Uh, text to image uh, uh, technology. Uh, the idea is that you can type in a text prompt and it will return text. And you're like, well, if you not, haven't heard of that concept or like, what's the super biggie big deal, right? Well, you could type in text prompts and it'll give you any kind of text uh, that it is, I'm going to put quote unquote familiar with. And we can talk about kind of how 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 it, it learns. But uh, the idea is, you know, maybe you say, okay, add, give me give me Python code that'll add two numbers together and it'll give you Python code that'll two numbers together. Give me a short two paragraph essay on the early life of Mozart and it'll, it'll attempt to give that to you. Uh, you know, you could, you can put in some text and say, summarize this, this story for me and it'll summarize it for me. Uh, write a, um, write a technical bullet point summary on, um, on this particular topic and it'll, 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 you know, it'll do that. Uh, and so that's 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 the idea. The biggest tool out there is ChatGPT. It's been a lot of controversy because, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, like especially students, etc. You know, wanna 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 be able to use this and and kind of get away with with not having to do it themselves. But we can get into the whole controversial part of it. But that's the idea: is a text prompt that then uh, returns text, and it could be something as you know, what is one plus one, all the way to, uh, you know, ex please explain. Uh, Please explain string theory uh, in a hundred words or less, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. in simple terms. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the other thing for anyone who hasn't used it or hasn't really dug into it more is it's also um, it's conversational too. That's why it's called Chat GPT. I'm assuming is is um, you can, you don't just add you, you don't just have to ask the question. You can actually continue on um, follow up questions and follow up conversations to 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 sort of keep digging. So it's kind of like. It's kind of like Google's a person, basically, is how I see it. You know, it's like it's like you're talking to Google, but the Google's a person, and they're responding to you and reacting to it. So, like you said, you know, uh, write you know write me a hundred word essay on X, Y, and Z, and then the follow up could be, can you can you make it you know in a, a more lighthearted tone or funny or, or or whatever, and then it'll try a different one and and, and go through it. And so, um, it is. If you haven't tried it out, you definitely should uh, just just go over and, and test that out because it's it's wild, <laughs> it's it's absolutely wild. <clears throat> yeah, it's <laughs> it is wild. I went through a honeymoon phase on that as well. The the text to text generation I didn't start probably until the end of summer looking into it um, because uh, well <laughs> it, it 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 has helped me in many ways actually. I guess we could talk about like a practical application of it before sure. even in AEC. Like there were times when I was thinking of ideas or like, um, like I was, I was, I was just thinking I needed one more bullet point for a learning objective. I wrote an entire abstract. I had three learning objectives and I was so happy, but I needed that fourth one. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. I like, I just, I'm, I'm stumped. I really am. I, you know, I know like the DNA of what it should be. And so, I asked ChatGPT, "Hey, can you generate a a fourth um, um, learning objective from this abstract and these points? You know, in the style of a technical, whatever, whatever." And uh, you know, it generated a few ideas for me, and then that's what sparked the idea to be like, "Oh yeah!" And it just got me over that little bit of that block, if you want to call it, or speed bump. 
mm-hmm. for me to then I completely rewrote everything. In fact, nothing was brand, nothing, not even one word was the same from what I got, but it helped me mm-hmm. uh, start thinking and kind of get me from get me going again from when I, I was I was totally stuck. Uh, and so that's just like one practical application of it. Uh, you know, I'm sure Jeff, you probably have a similar story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think you know my, my introduction to it was was sometime last year, um, and it was actually more along the lines of um, uh, YouTube stuff and like um, search engine optimization and keywords oh, uh-huh. and whatnot. And and I just saw a few videos where people were talking about it, and that was actually when I first heard of it. And so I, you know, I I, I actually haven't used it too much for it, um, but but I have. I have used it and it has sparked some ideas for, for even for like a video title or something. But, but from there, yeah, I, then I started just testing it out, like to see what it could do with the obvious is, is the code writing. Cause I think that's kind of where, um, I think that's kind of where it took off in, in the general, not the mainstream, but maybe the mainstream because of software engineering and, and, you know, there's just the amount of, the amount of copy pasting that, that happens and, and, and what, mm-hmm. what people usually go through to find that source code to, for this. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of, you know, I started seeing it there and the obvious with Dynamo and Python and so on. Um, and so I tested some of that stuff out, like, hey, write, write something for me. Uh, but then I, wh- where I was interested was then thinking about, like, the, wh- like what kind of things do I, do I Google for, for, for professional life that, that Google's works, but it may not be the best tool for some of the things. And the first one I thought of was building code and and searching building code and whatnot. And and I used to have all these crazy ways to search the public codes and, and all that whatnot. Um, and, you know, it did a pretty damn good job of, you know, saying like if you wanted to say, hey, what's the what's the required egress, you know, what's the required area for um, uh, egress window in IRC, you know, 2012 and it would it would pop it up and then you could say hey you know what chapter is that from in section and it would show you and sort of dig through those things and that that was pretty cool um it couldn't dig deep enough into some of the local regulations because <laughs> maybe those existed in like a not even an ocr pdf or something i don't know <laughs> but uh but but like that was pretty neat um i attempted i did attempt to have it um um sort of lay out a floor plan which is kind of interesting and, and i have that example saved somewhere that i have to I, I did plan on doing a video for text to text and I may still do it one day, but it was interesting because it used like slashes and in, in lines to like try to lay out a floor plan. And it was pretty awful, but the fact that it did it was interesting, uh-huh. you know, that like it, it tried to do it that way. And then the thing, the, the other thing that, um, um, you know, in, in residential construction, especially, um, you know, some basic, um, basic structural stuff actually, right. Where, um, you know, uh, digging through some of the wood, the wood books and PDFs to get like, you know, this is an eight foot span of X, Y, and Z where it's, it's not even really, you don't even need reactions really. It's just kind of openings and guidelines. Those are always kind of interesting to find. And so just saying, Hey, you know, if I've got a span of, you know, 20 feet and I'm a, a typical dead load of 40 SPS or whatever, then what, it, what's, you know, what size beam shot. And it was actually giving me some, some results, which, and then you can say like, Hey, like where, where were you getting that from? Or what, what, what code were you using? What, you know, what, what, you know what what formulas were you using and it would it would you know continue through it so that's the kind of stuff where where um where i initially thought and now my next sort of thinking is is um a lot of the examples i've been seeing of like summarizing stuff right whether it's summarizing a big pdf like you like, like you were saying even summarizing your abstract is one idea but but summarizing a big pdf of something i think of like spec books and meeting minutes mm-hmm. and like submittals and just all of that shit <laughs> right and then you start thinking well that that's that's pretty cool if 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 you know you can take some of the tedious work out of that while still understanding you know the the concepts behind the document and stuff then um you know that that could be super valuable yeah you know and i yeah jeff i i agree i think valuable is the right word you know i think <laughs> One, I'm probably going to get a lot of comments on this, or they might already be here. Is um, what I what I've told myself from when these this these tools came out with text to text was that um, I would verify everything. You know, mm. it's it's a what what text what text to text generation does is it gives you it will always give you an answer, and sometimes it's confidently wrong. <laughs> uh, and so 
you know, like, like you said, if you go and you ask for this spec section, you know, what's the window, what does the window open clear need to be on this building code? And where did you get that? You know, you kind of, it kind of does the work for you. Mm-hmm. Then you dig through the spec and you're like, boom, there it is. I verified it. I see it. I'm mm-hmm. reading it. Oh, and there's, and then you, you know, you like that, that makes total sense to me. Um, mm-hmm. saying, you know, how do I, how do I, um, <laughs> uh, John Pearson put this up, you know, lead, type in, how do you delete all the walls? inside of Revit using Python, you mm-hmm. know, and it gives you an answer, you know, and that's a dangerous thing, but, you know, you need <laughs> someone who's knowledgeable about Python and Revit mm-hmm. to review that, mm-hmm. you know, and so uh, I think I think uh, if you can see it in that light, like you're always verifying what you have, then it is a, it is, it is, uh, you know, it's certainly, um, it's certainly a good tool worthwhile in, in, in looking at, yeah. Yeah, and there, there's uh, I'm just reading in the chat and stuff, and some people. So I, like, I have like, another point. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, I was. Can I make another point? Oh yeah, yeah go, go for it. No, go good, for good. it. I got I, another I was, point. No, I got no, another point. <laughs> go yeah. make your point. Make your point. Make your point. <laughs> um, so with these, so we we only mentioned it briefly, but uh, the way these, the way I understand it, and I'm not the Chat GPT backend um, expert, but uh, it does it does reference everything it possibly can to teach itself what what about humans and language and all that mm-hmm. and so um it is trained off of uh resources out there that um are on the internet so uh and and other metaverse places the way i understand it so mm-hmm. um so you know i, I was one thing i really like about chat gpt and, and these other text to text generators is that it'll tell you what's not there mm-hmm. and so um i've been doing a lot of heavy coding for a structural analysis software called Tecla Structural Designer. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing a lot of stuff with the API. And so I typed in there, hey, chat GPT, tell me how to do this with the Tecla Structural Designer API. And it gave me completely wrong answers that had nothing to do with it. <laughs> and I realized, okay, there's probably nothing out there on this because it's you know, it's, it's a relatively new software. The API is relatively new. It's kind of a niche thing within the mm-hmm. structural subdiscipline, et cetera, et cetera. And then so, um, so the silver lining too there is that uh, when I'm thinking about like topics for uh, either webcasts or or um, conferences, you know, I'll hit ChatGPT like tell me everything you know about this, and you know, it's like, well, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, you know. <laughs> and then it's it's a good starter to say, okay, there's probably gap there that I could help fill in the industry uh, mm-hmm. in that area. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and I also I believe. Um... There's a there's a certain level of of the information that may be out of date because of the way the right. the, the either the database or however it does the learning and so um, even yeah when I, was talking I think about, it like, cuts the, it off 2021 or something yeah and so that's why mm-hmm. like, even with the building code stuff that's why you know I, I was when I was sort of going through it I was trying to like find out and I I think I even asked like what's the latest building code that you have or you can reference or whatever because you know that's where you, you gotta you got to imagine if you're if you're even if you're doing something like you're saying like an abstract or or maybe a YouTube video and you're looking for trends well the trends are going to be as early as two years ago <laughs> and so I think depending on what you're depending <laughs> on what you're the latest fat yeah exactly the latest, the latest fat is this year yeah <laughs> you're gonna do the latest fashion and go to go to the store and buy those clothes exactly exactly and so so I mean but being aware of that is 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 obvious and. Um, but it doesn't, it still doesn't change the value of, of, of the back end of what, what's happening and, and things like, like you're saying, like the things like the, the coding and, and whatnot, those are a lot of that stuff is, you know, hasn't changed in a long time. Right. Uh, uh right. however, you know, if, if, uh, I, I think w- the other thing I was doing too, which I tested out was sort of, um, like actual like Revit stuff, like, like help mm-hmm. almost stuff where it's like, Hey, I, you know, tell me how to mirror a wall, mirror a wall in Revit. And like just to see what it would come back, and it would you know it was coming back with steps and steps and steps and steps. So um, what I didn't try, which I should have, was like asking it about a new feature that didn't exist in like 2021 to see what it would say for for, for you know. How I'm to, sure how to... our listener is gonna check that out now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> to, see, to see what it was. So um, so I mean I think I think there's a, there's so much there's so much that people can do with it, and um, so so may, maybe before we jump into I think... uh, uh, a demo of it, uh, yeah. I guess for for people to. To be able to just get started on, on trying these things and maybe just listing out. So, you know, text to image, you have Midjourney, Dolly, and Veras, I guess you can consider, right? Because that's built sure. into it. Um, as far as getting to them, is there anyone that you would suggest to look at as well? Or are those kind of the three that you would say if people wanted to start? 
Those are but, the big ones. There's another one called Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion. Okay. Stable Diffusion. Yeah. Um, that one, um, that technology, uh, it's pretty open source, which is nice because, mm. oh, I shouldn't say open source. It allows you to access it. Uh, and so I've seen some interesting stuff done inside of Blender mm -hmm. uh, for like, for like rendering mm -hmm. using AI, things like that. So that is another one. I, mm -hmm. Those are probably the big three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then as far as getting to those, you know, um, Mid journey is a little weird because you have to join a Discord server, and if anyone's not familiar, uh, typically, right? I'll Tip technically, technically, the purists would say no, but but let's say typically, Tip yeah, the typical way to get to it. It's anyone who's never been part of Discord, it's kind of a weird place to be if you're not familiar with it. You gotta like, <laughs> it's just it is. Um, Dolly, you can just create an account for under OpenAI and and pretty much log in and use it essentially. Um, and then Veris, a uh, similar thing. You, you go over to their website, you can do a trial and so on. Um, and then for text to text, um, you know, chat GPT is what, you know, we've been talking about. Um, what other tools is, is there any other tools that you were messing with for text to text? Um, I have been, but I, I, they could have, I don't know, but they could have very well been all based off that technology. Yeah. That's so, the weird thing about uh, it. Yeah, you know, like there's a new, there's a website end, right? called new.com you know, mm -hmm. for searching. There's like other things I've tried, but it could, I don't know. So it could have very well been built off of, yeah. off of that same, uh, yeah. that same, yeah, that same. Yeah, there's API, a lot of tools. So. There's already a lot of tools that are, that there's are so many now. Back end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so <laughs> and that one for that too, you can just head on over to, I think it's chat.openai or something like that. Just, just Google chat GPT and you, uh, and then you create an account and, and you can utilize that. The big thing with that right now is because of the takeoff, um, uh, the volume got pretty crazy for them. So, um, if you really want to use it a lot, I think you pretty much are going to have to pay now, right? I believe just because you of, are, yeah. yeah. And what happened was Microsoft saw the promise in that technology, and so they, they are now. I, you know, I'm not the exact expert on this, on that, but uh, now they're going to be implementing that technology in their products, mm -hmm. uh, being part owner, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, yeah. uh, it's moving, it's moving pretty quick. I got to say something before we get to the questions. Is yeah. you know this whole controversial thing about you know this does all work on the internet if you're doing text prompts. Even if you're writing uh, your own, a you're writing an API, uh, you know, there's always concerns about that. You know, if you want to just try it out, you know, you could you could just not put, you know, sensitive information in there, secret mm -hmm. project names, uh, your name, your birth date, social security number. You know, if you want to if you want to try some of this stuff and, and, and you know, you're a little concerned about that, uh, you could you could consider putting things that are, um, you know, uh, public knowledge or you know things that you kind of talk about every day you know give me the weather and so you know whatever so yeah i'm just yeah. saying you know <laughs> it, i i there is there is some worry about 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 that and you know if you're careful um if you think about it um only 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 put things you're comfortable sharing um to everyone else maybe that's a right. good way to put it Right. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> awesome. So, so let's 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 dive in and, and, and at least show maybe one, one example uh, of, of oh. uh, how you've utilized this if you're ready for that. And uh, and I'm going to I'm going to read through the chat a little bit and see. Yeah. Why don't you go there as I comments. prep and, and yeah, <laughs> there were a couple people. Um, somebody mentioned as an example for text to text uh, uh, an application called Tome, T-O-M-E. I've actually never heard of okay. that, so I'm not going to I'm not going to necessarily say go use it, but uh, it's something worth Googling, I guess. Uh, that's Renzo said, so Renzo, thanks for that. Um, Daniel Howard actually said he just asked ChatGPT uh, what the most recent cited papers or presentations on computational design in AEC, um, and it's giving him examples from 21 and 22. So okay, looks like you got some 22 information there. So it's <laughs> that's getting close. I have to imagine that it's going to get more more recent as as people use it more and they keep ramping up the technology and whatnot, right? I, I would imagine, but uh -huh. um, cool. Uh, there was somebody who asked a little bit about uh, the copyright and the images and the image generators and where that comes from. I actually haven't looked too far, too much into it on my end, but it is an interesting discussion. It is, I, I don't know it is an interesting discussion. I don't yeah, know if, I you've, think if you've I, thought about I, it or researched it at all, but... Like where do the images come I, from, right? Is is the I, yeah? <laughs> I haven't. I have not. There's two things I have not done with text to image. I have not uploaded any image that wasn't already publicly on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean that. Sorry, that is not copyrighted. That's like I I put it in my face one time. I think is what I did. <laughs> um, and then I've also never used anything generated from there, like in any kind of like public way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so like I I have not. I have so far skirted kind of the not skirted, but 
I haven't really looked into the whole copyright issue, but it is it is it, it's a it's a valid concern. I know uh, Nate Miller uh, from Proving Ground has mm. some good articles um, on his uh, LinkedIn site about 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 that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I awesome. encourage everyone to go and yeah, kind of read up about what where the state is. And you know, I'm I honestly think I don't think anyone has a straight has a straight answer on yeah. that quite yet, just because yeah. it's so just because it's so. so new. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and I guess to some extent, yeah, it depends on how much of the image is being used, or I, I don't know. Yeah, and where, yeah, it's, I, it's it is it is a tough question, but at the same time, like the way I see it is, um, I don't think at this point in time, I don't think even with like a Veras, um, I wouldn't necessarily use that rendering and and print it and 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 use that with the client yet. I mean, you can. You can, but if you look close enough, right, it's a stitched together image and you're going to see some imperfections and stuff. And to me, it's more of that's giving you the ideas and then you're, and then you're going back to your model and you're, you're, you're building in what ideas you liked and you're using that inspiration to then make, make the final. Um, and then even, even if you talk to Ben and Bill, like they were saying, you know, the, the end goal is, 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 is to, to have a, a rendering as well that, that rep, that, that looks like your model. Right. And, and so, so like, you know, the, it's, it's, you know, the, you're battling both sides, but it is interesting to look at when you think about it, like where, where did all these trees and, and, and materials and stuff come from? Right. And, and sure. so I get that. And then of course with chat GPT, there's, there's all the discussions with students and, and writing and papers and, and all that stuff. But I know that there, um, there's also plenty of AI stuff being generated to be able to see if something was generated with AI and, and, and yeah, yeah, we didn't go into that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. was this generated by an AI yeah, was this generated by AI? And I think I think <laughs> what I see it, what I see it as, and the same thing, it's it's just modifying the way that we do it. Like like to me, to me, even if it was like if I was in school and and I asked it to write me a paper, if you read through that, you're I mean, if if you actually just took the time to read through it, you probably realize it was written. It wasn't written by a human. I just imagine. I mean, it, to some aspect, there's some some points of it. Um, but if you're talking about like summarizing and whatnot, I mean, to me, that's not much different than, you know, going through a bunch of encyclopedias, highlighting stuff and then paraphrasing it for a research paper. Uh, you know, it's just, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Super interesting. All right. Uh, let me just double check here. Maybe this is good. <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah. Kelly was saying artists don't like their, their styles copied. Yeah. But guess what? Get it. That's that's called yeah. inspiration, right? I mean, I I could tell you when I design something, I'm you know some my top three architects are always you know always in mind. So guess what? They have a little bit of a feeling that looks like it. You know, I don't I don't know. That's that's you know there's there's a there's a fine line there. I think obviously doing a direct copy of something is one thing, but all right. Are you ready to to, to chat about what? Yeah. Do you have anything? Uh, you know, I saw. <laughs> yeah, I think probably just one thing is too is this text this text to doing something is probably a good way to put it is where i think all this is headed hmm. um uh shout out to um Ian Keo, uh, over at hypar they are hmm. already starting to have text to and i saw this in the in the chat hmm. like text to do something yeah. uh and so i think the text to do something uh is just going to be kind of the wave of the future mm -hmm. and in kind of a lot of different in a lot of different formats so kind of expect that to creep into our everyday lives you know yeah. i i heard this term I think it was on LinkedIn. You know, some people are worried about AI taking their jobs. You know, I heard, I heard it that AI won't take your job, but someone who uses AI might. I was oh, just gonna so, say, I, I I actually it was either today. Did or, you see or, that? I mean, I no, no, I, I saw something similar, but it was like uh, uh, somebody meant somebody used the term prompting engineer. Or prompt engineer, oh. <laughs> and I, 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 I laughed at that because like, that's, oh that's my kind of, <laughs> because when mm. you think about it, when you Learn start using prompt. these tools, then, then the, the the you're actually the the specialty almost becomes understanding the prompt or, or at least understanding how to direct to the AI, you know, in mm. the way you want, which is super interesting. I mean, I just I, I don't AI, know where AI whisper, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. it may be so. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't yeah. heard that, but it makes. It no, no, of... and I don't, I, yeah, and, and yes, there, there may be some jobs that do get obsolete, just like, you know, when the tractor was invented and when, you know, the printing press and, you know, whatever, right? But then they shift it, you know, you shift and you're, there's different, you know, right. it, 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 it doesn't necessarily eliminate, it might create new jobs in the same industry or something like that. And so I think that is going to be the reality of it, 
where maybe there is some I think so some tasks that can be done by AI and be better and more efficient but doesn't mean that it's gonna not create two more different types of jobs right so I don't know, that's that's kind yeah. of yeah and it. you know I don't think it's going away that's just my humble yeah. opinion I don't think AI is going away no. uh not at all. you know and people said that when the calculator came out or when word came out you know is that going to replace all the authors you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so, uh, the authors. But right? <laughs> I know we're talking about a really intelligent technology that mimics human behavior. So it is, it is, it could be a little unnerving. I get it. Yes, yes. And as, uh, again, as a sci fi fan and anyone who's seen uh, Ter- the Terminator movies and stuff, you know, you, there's, there's obvious. And actually, before we jump into, into this, then <laughs> the last thing I want people to look up and, and you don't have to subscribe or anything, but I did, there was an article today on the New York Times and it was, um, some, some, one of the, the, the writers spent, I forgot like hour two or three hours chatting with the Bing AI, which is basically the chat chat GPT in the back end. Um, and it's the whole conversation. He just published the whole conversation. And towards the end, it get, it's extremely creepy, like very, very creepy. The, oh, the, what the AI says. So definitely check that out. You get, you'll find it if you guys Google it. But <laughs> Well, would you like to share my screen before we call it quits? Let's I can it. at least show something practical with customizing. Let's do it. Let's do um, it. Okay. So let me, uh, let me, uh, are you sharing my screen now? Yep. Okay. So uh, okay. So this um, this is a the idea of AI technology inside Dynamo, and um, and uh, I just thought I'd try to think of some applications of how AI text to text could be used inside of the AEC industry. Usually, when I try to use an API, uh, ChatGPT does have an op- has an open API. Uh, you can learn all about it going to the a chat GPT API, you can read all about it. Um, I've done some testing where it was just off on its own using Python, but then now I was able to get it working inside of Dynamo. I can show you the script there on the side. Uh, it's really not that difficult. Um, but you know, this scenario, I said, okay, I have some, uh, I have some general notes. I was just trying to think, let me see if I can drag it over here. I have some general notes here in the background. Let's see if you can see them. I mean, they're kind of grayed out because this is but like I have some general notes and I said, okay, based on all that, all that text knows text, um, tell me what building codes being referenced in the text was just some my text prompt. Mm-hmm. And then it actually, you'll appreciate this. It actually returned that it's a, uh, it's referencing the international building code 2003 from state and uh, with the state of Connecticut, uh, addendum. So, uh, you know, this, I mean, this is just one example, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so kind of like when you show someone how to do, how to change a parameter in Dynamo, and they're like, "Well, what else can Dynamo use for?" You're like, "Well, what can it be used for?" You know. So this was just these are just little things I'm kind of going. I'm in early testing on this, but if you're if you're ever interested, um, this Python node does hold some of the uh, ways to connect with a Chat GPT uh, API. Uh, if you were going to push it, I had to change some of this just because I can't show some of this stuff just based on there their uh, user end agreements. Um, mm-hmm. But basically you um, you go to their website and you can pay this, you do have to pay. Uh, they consider them tokens and mm-hmm. it's kind of based on how many words get read and generated. And it's pretty cheap in the order of magnitude of like thousands of cents. But right, anyway, right. <laughs> um, if you can get a key, then you can do that. And then there's different prompts. Um, so like in this case, um, you have to first uh, load in the, you have to first load in the references that get all the DLLs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then um, you can place in your prompts uh, and then you can put in a maximum so that you're not like spending a whole pile of money in case this ends up like running forever. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. also put a maximum on how many tokens you want to pay for each month so that it doesn't you don't get a bill for like a million dollars. It's only like 18 cents or whatever. Anyway, it's kind of more practical thing. And then you just run these simple methods to say, OK, um, with this input and then this happens to be the text generator. Um, and here's the prompt and then boom, give me an output. And then basically this is the output and then it, this is what came out, but you know, that certainly it could be other things, right? Like, um, whatever else, whatever prompt else you want. Um, so this is just kind of some things that you can, you know, like kind of like low hanging fruit. If you want to think about just trying to get this involved in your company, it's not just, it's not just out of the box tools, uh, Mm -hmm. because these have open API, you're able to do that. I do have other sample code that does, I just won't show because it's a matter of time, but we do have, uh, there are other, are other um, open APIs for text to image, and I've mm-hmm. done some of that too, uh, where it'll generate images and then you can see them 
um, uh, you know, it'll give point you to a website and you can see the you can see the results there. You know, I can think of some practical applications there. If it's like, you know, give me a material that's like this and this, you know, it could at least get you started to think about what that material might look like, you know, et cetera. So um, these these tools are definitely here to stay. Uh, and if you want to explore customizing them, uh, it's not so difficult to do. I do plan to do um, a lot more um, like real instruction, kind of step by step, how to get in and out of these APIs. Mm-hmm. Uh, in- that's no, good that, enough. No, that's awesome. That's great. I mean, yeah. that, that right there. I mean, the fact. So, so, I mean, you're using Dynamo. You're you're reading data from your model essentially, and then you're pushing mm-hmm. it to to Chat GPT or OpenAI, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. <laughs> and to and then you're you're at you're prompting. You're asking it to to do something with that information that that's that's pretty wild right I and mean, that that's the next step of of taking it now and and being able to now not just because yeah you could have typed i guess you could have copied and pasted that text or a pdf of that and had it read it right but but now you're you're sitting inside your your zone right where you're working just right. a little like Veras, right. where you're sitting and you're working now and you're actually using you know you're using the the tool within your tool and that to me is like that's where it's going to be right it's it's, it's exciting yeah you know yeah i know i've had some people look at this and say well i could do this with dynamo i could have it do a word search of mm. of of the name and then i can put okay uh, yeah but then when you do another prompt on that particular text like okay now tell me every time i say uh c o n you know c o n c dot instead of concrete or you know whatever right okay now you got to code that Right. right. As opposed to it's just a prompt. And then, you know, it, so like it, the idea is that it should give you at least get you thinking about how some of these tools could could uh, uh, help automate some of those manual tasks that you do. Maybe it could help with some of the uh, some of the people that are really struggling with list in, in Dynamo <laughs> <laughs> instead of figuring out dictionaries and, and all the stuff they just use chat GPT to filter the list form or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know what I'm doing now is this is kind of all still a little more, maybe a little more esoteric. Mm-hmm. What I'm all about is concepts. And do you remember we talked of, of like a few shows ago about the book I wrote Dynamo and it was a book of concepts, right? And so I have actually hundreds of concepts of Dynamo, like how do you change a parameter? How do you change a material? Mm-hmm. How do you get an area? Like these are all, all concepts. And so what I'm working on now is using AI generation to pull those concepts together into through text prompts to generate a workflow. So like um, get me get me all the structural beams, um, give me all the areas, um, give me all of this parameter, and then write it to an Excel spreadsheet with this in this uh, in this sheet with this spreadsheet name. And I already have like a good template to pull all those concepts together. So I'm kind of, that's kind of what I'm working on like in the next few months. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that, yeah. So the idea is, you know, it, it's not just text to text, but it's also text to do something else. So that's, that's kind of something I'm working on. And it all starts with these concepts. And if you have concepts already set up, like I think that's the way they're doing it at high part too. It's easier to kind of pull them together and generate, generate, uh, more uh, generate more complicated workflows from from concepts that start from from text prompts. Hmm? Uh, well, the l- last question, I think, to end this up because uh, I'm curious myself. Um, you know, as as a structural engineer and someone who's worked in, you know, obviously you, you spread your arms out across the whole industry, but um, you know, as a <clears throat> as a structural engineer, I've always wondered, you know, how does this play into um, the actual analysis of structure and have you thought about that a little bit and i know you know robot structure analysis and and the tools that are out there now like how do you see ai because i to me like certain certain aspects of engineering whether it's structural whether it's mechanical airflow that kind of stuff i feel like there's a huge opportunity potentially for for ai or machine learning to to assist in those yeah certainly now, the good thing about structural engineering and other systems is they are they are they are based on on physics and science. And so mm. it is a little easier to, to if hard code is the right word, uh, <laughs> uh, those types of yeah. things so that um, AI could, could more easily uh, uh, generate answers for you. But mm-hmm. the whole caveat here is, 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 you know, that's not your final answer, but, right. but it could give you some ideas, you know, like how deep would this trust need to be if it's going 200 feet and, mm-hmm. you know, like, okay, you know, and then like, of course, you're going to verify everything. But, of course, but yeah, that's right. that. I yeah. Um, 
Mm, that's on my kudu list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just curious if you if you do do dove down in it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm curious if you dove into it, just because I, I I don't spend enough time on, on that side of the analysis to, to, to be able to really dig in. But to me, it just seems like there's a huge opportunity because of understanding sure. that there's obvious, you know, there's human interaction with, with the approach and the design, the layout and all that stuff that, that can change all of those. But the, like you said, the, the actual reactions and analysis is very scientific. So I was curious what areas potentially beyond just like, you know, analysis programs, like what AI can add to like an analysis program, like what, you know, what, how it can add to it. So I'm curious. Yeah, to I'm just thinking early out. concept, right? We're talking, I mean, like we're talking about the text to text to image, right? It's like, mm. I want uh, a low rise in this style and it's got, it's got these spans, mm. right? At this grid and this type of floor, you know, maybe in that there right. could be mathematical uh, engineering concepts that could, that could then be generated with that. So there is at least some, there's some engineering logic with some of those answers. Like mm -hmm. you don't have, you don't have a hundred foot spans with like four mm -hmm. foot deep beam and, you know, or slab or, you know what I mean? That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, I could see certainly see that uh, being being awesome. being implemented in those types of scenarios. Awesome, cool, man. Well, this has been fun. <laughs> it's been fun. Did we did we kind of handle in general? Yeah, um, yeah. It's it seems it what's what's awesome is I'm looking at the chat and there hasn't been a ton of questions, questions, but more of like I think it's it's spurring like a ton of ideas of what it could be excellent. used for for people, which I think is what what this needs right now, right? It's That's so, all it is. It's yeah. so early and 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 it needs. It needs people to now like see the potential in it instead of being terrified of it and 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 see how we can harness it because like you said it's not going away and so you know if if you know we we are the only ones that can control how it's gonna how it's gonna be used within our industry so let's let's do it right so i'm, I'm excited that even within the chat is just a bunch of people thinking of different ways to use it so like analyzing the model for building codes and blah, like just going through all this stuff like it's it's you know that's that's exciting to me so i think we that is exciting i think i think that's that's all we can ask for right <laughs> that's all we can ask for yeah and maybe they could reach out to you or me if they, have, if they want to geek out about concepts or questions or, or whatever yep, yeah definitely i'll make sure to put all the links you can reach uh, marcelo at down in the description below um any final words before we uh we wrap up yeah i think uh well i think uh we we're, we we have an amazing industry with amazing intelligent people ai is not going away so um you know, it, it might be time to it might be time to embrace it. And then for you, Jeff, keep up the great work. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for coming on again. And everyone else, uh, have a great weekend. And uh, and I'll see you guys next week. Make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, here on YouTube. And uh, of course, um, uh, come hang out next week at thir on Thursday. And also support RevitFamily.biz um, uh, and because they support me. So uh, with that, everyone have an awesome weekend, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.